Hello and welcome. This is Beverly Fells Jones, the Silver Fox of Consciousness, and I just want to welcome you to my podcast. This is a cold day. (laughs) I am recording from Nashville, Tennessee. Yes, I've come out here to do a little R&R and I've never been to Nashville before so I was just looking at some of the things that are available and some of the you know like the grand old opera but they've got things like the Parthenon and (sighs) colleges and just a number of things so I'm looking forward to finding out what Nashville is about other than country music. So today I was thinking about what I wanted to share with you and there was a couple of topics that were on my mind and but they were rather controversial and you know I don't do controversy very much. And until I calm down, I'm going to save those guys for another day. So I went and just started using my subconscious mind and asked, so what should I talk about? I've told you that before. I went into meditation and I just said, what should it be? And that was just as recently as 15 minutes ago and popped in my head you know you were reading last night and you liked the information that you were reading and it it's it's usually a reinforcement of the things that I've already learned so I was in a book called Neville Goddard G-O-D-D-A-R-D The Complete Reader and it's a complete 10 book collection of his spiritual classics in one book which is wonderful I have all 220 some of his lectures um, you know, on my laptop and I've got audio by him so take the time and see about finding a copy of Neville Goddard's books but today I am in the book The Power of Awareness Chapter 6 and it's on attention we over time have had such a short attention span we are looking for instant gratification and I know you've heard this before everything comes so quickly you know even research is like go to the internet everybody goes to the internet and I've learned, and I'm sure you've learned, that there are things on the internet that are true, and there's things on the internet that are false, deliberately misleading. So one of the other things is I go to books. I go to the library, I go to the bookstore, and I even have to pay attention to who my source is. And so I've gotten to the point in a lot of instances that I go many, many years back for my sources. And then once I get those sources, then I move forward and see if there's new information, new scientific information, uh, a new train of thought, a new hypothesis, And if that hypothesis has been proven scientifically. um, One of the things that came to mind is that somebody who doesn't know me, I mean, really, they did know me, looked at me and said, go get the facts. And the issue was I had. And the other half of the fact was they hadn't and so when you are looking for things and I'm digressing here a little bit I want you to look for the truth always look for the truth don't just say well so and so told me 
or so and so I saw this on the news or I saw this on find yourself a very trusted source and if you're using the information to make a decision go for the facts it's kind of like going to the car dealership and looking for a particular car for me when I was looking for my first truck I was pulling a pop-up camper and I was a naive shopper I mean before there weren't certain things I needed to understand it's like I made the assumption that this particular that trucks they had one model one engine they I didn't know that you had choices of the engine that you wanted in the truck I mean most cars I'd been buying cars before and it was just one in- engine and you know the basic parts of the vehicle only thing you worried about was the cosmetics well this gentleman never asked me I told him I was pulling a trailer he never asked me what was I pulling and was I ever planning to get a new one or to upgrade And what happened is he led me in the area of, okay, what color do you want? What size do you want? All that kind of stuff. And I wound up buying a truck with a smaller engine. So when it came time for me to upgrade to a larger trailer, the engine I had would not pull the one I really wanted. It didn't have enough pulling power. It would only pull 6,500 pounds. Well, the new trailer I wanted was 6,500 pounds empty. I mean, without me putting all my stuff in it, right? So I couldn't get that trailer. I did upgrade to a smaller one interim, but I had to buy a new truck but when I went for that new truck I read all the paperwork I read the what were the options what were the engines what if it was this kind of axle what will it tow and and I got all the facts before I made the decision and I didn't count on just talking to the salesman because remember the salesman's trying to sell you something And he's going to try and, okay, you know, the first thing they ask you, how much do you want to pay per month? And it's like, that's not what I need. What I need is this option, this option, this option, and this one. Now, what do you have that has that on it? Or will I have to order it? And what's the best price you, your dealership, is willing to give me? I will shop multiple dealerships until I get what I want. That's going with facts. So do that. And so when you're learning new things, get the facts. And then learn from that. You don't want to find out later that you have learned something totally new. Or it's something that is totally wrong. Um, listen to l- my last podcast on cognitive dissonance and learn about how you feel internally when you're learning something that is t- completely different from what you were taught or that you taught yourself. Look at that. But today I'm talking about attention. And Neville Goddard starts out by quoting James, the first chapter, the eighth verse from the Bible. And he says, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Just think about that. If you want to, but you don't want to, If you really love this person, but they treat you wrong and you're trying to decide if you're staying or you're going, you're in a job that you really love, but 
the management is driving you up a tree. I mean, these are just some ideas that just came to mind. But you're unstable. And what happens is that your attention is divided. Your attention is, okay, I got to do my job, but I got to worry about the boss. What is he going to think? Is he going to tell me that he wants me to do it a different way? That's one area of attention. But when we talk about attention as far as creating the world that you want to be in, you've really got to know what you want. And many times in my life, I have been wavering about what I desired. Wavering about, like I said today, trying to decide what I was going to talk about in this podcast. Well, the idea being, today is about paying attention. Attention is forceful in the proportion to the narrowness of its focus. That is, and I'm quoting Neville here, when it is obsessed with a single idea or sensation, it is steadied and powerfully focused only by such an adjustment of the mind as permits you to see only one thing. For you, steady the attention and increase its power by confining it. Have you ever been watching a program or reading a book or you were in the middle of a project and nothing takes you away from that? You are so intent on what you're doing that time just passes. That's focus. But most of the time, we wind up focusing on things that are not going to move us forward. We're focusing on a game, or we're focusing on a, you know, a, 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 a me cooking, all right, on a dish and trying to perfect making bread. I finally got there. Anyway, but if you are looking to improve yourself, get a better job, have a business that is taking care of all of your needs and then some, paying off all your bills if you have them, student loans, credit card, any kind of bills that you have, you have to have focused attention on how you're going to do that. Neville goes on to say, the desire which realizes itself is always a desire upon which attention is exclusively concentrated. For an idea is endowed with power. So listen, your idea, your desire, your wants is endowed with power only in proportion to the degree of attention fixed on it. If you're not concentrated on what you want to do and what you desire, then nothing really will come from it. And yes, focused attention. So that's not just sitting there and thinking about it. It's thinking about it and what is my next step? Oh, I need to, I'll give you an example that's happening to me right now. I decided that I'm going back to college. And why did I decide that? Because I can go, and anybody in the state of Texas over 65, so I'm telling you my age, (laughs) you can go to college and take two classes per per semester for free. Why shouldn't I take advantage of that? If you are in Texas and you're disabled, under 65, you can go to college to submit two classes per semester for free. 
take advantage of that. So I'm going back to do something that I've wanted to do all my life, and that is to become a pastry chef. I know that's totally different from dealing with the mind and hypnosis and all the rest of it, but it is something I've always wanted to do. So I'm concentrating on how to get admitted. I had to find my um, transcription transcription from Dallas Baptist University and I knew I had a sealed copy somewhere in my house and I went into meditation I am paying attention now and it told me where to go I went there got it went right to it isn't that wonderful that's another class anyway but you want to pay attention so when you know what you want You must deliberately focus, focus, focus your attention on the feeling of the wish fulfilled until that feeling fills the mind and crowds out all other ideas out of your consciousness. So sitting and you have a desire. And you want something to happen. Now, you've got to do things. You've got to do work. However, in order for it to come to pass, you've got to know inside that it can't fail. That it is already done. You just have to do the legwork. It is already complete. So my visualizing Having my certificate in baking and pastry because I'm going to learn how to make croissants and um, Danish pastries and those kind of things, which I've, I've done experiments in my kitchen. But to be taught, well, that's going to be cool, right? But what is it that you want to come to pass? What is it that you desire So what I want you to do right now, if you're not driving, if you're in a position that you can close your eyes, I want you to just close your eyes and think about that one thing, that thing that you desire the most, the thing that you want to occur in your life. One woman was determined that she was going to have the best insurance agency in the world, or at least in her neighborhood, that people would come to her for their insurance needs. But he, she also concentrated her attention on the type of person who would need her services. She narrowed it down, and she visualized that person in her office talking to her and she helping that person. So what is it that you desire? What is it do you want to graduate with a specific degree? So if that's the case, then think about walking across the stage for your graduation. Or even better yet, beyond the graduation, you're sitting in your ideal job doing the thing that you love because you got your degree and maybe a postgraduate degree, whatever that is. Visualize yourself completing that. If you're running a business such as the woman with the insurance business, what is it that you want? If you're, you've got a storefront, do you want to visualize people coming in and your cash register ringing and your shelves being emptied and you're selling all this, these things that you want to sell and that you're restocking your shelves? I don't know. But I'm going to take a moment and I want you to visualize that thing that you desire the most. Focus your attention on that thing. Okay. Got that thing in your mind? What it looks like? 
I want you to feel, bring up the emotion, whether it's happiness, joy, just the idea that this has happened for you. How do you feel when things that you desire have come true? Right? That that joy. Now, if you can't visualize what it is, how it feels, just say thank you. Just mentally say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Or visualize someone congratulating you in specific words. Choose some specific words that someone that you know, that you told them that you've accomplished this, or someone in your family, or someone you care about. How Visualize how they react when they get the news you've graduated, or that you you've completed your first year in business and you're on track for growing even larger. Feel that. This is good. And say thank you. Thank you. So every so often, once, twice, whenever you get a chance, three times a day, I want you to visualize and feel what you desire as already being done. So going on to what Neville says here, the power of attention is the measure of your inner force. Concentrated observation of one thing shuts out all other things and causes them to disappear. So it helps to get rid of doubt in your mind. Get rid of the doubt that you may have some issues. The great secret of success is to focus the attention on the feeling of the wish fulfilled without permitting any distraction. All progress depends upon an increase of attention. The ideas which impel you to action are those which dominate the consciousness, those which possess the attention. The idea which excludes all others from your field of attention discharges in action. In other words, as you concentrate on what your desire is, ideas will come to you. I refer to them as inspired actions. Take those inspired actions and act on them. Do them. Sometimes they move you forward. Sometimes they bring out some fallacy or something that you have to change, but you follow those ideas. And the last thing I want to say is Neville goes on to say, this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind, I press toward the mark. Twet press towards the mark. So this means you. This one thing you can do, forgetting those things that are behind, those mistakes you made, those things that didn't work out, those those things that are causing you consternation. Leave them behind and press toward the mark of fulfilling or filling your mind with the feeling of this wish fulfilled. It is done. Muhammad Ali was calling himself the greatest. I am the greatest before he won his very first fight. He had his eye on this wish fulfilled and he concentrated and he did everything to get him to where he 
is known as the greatest fighter, heavyweight fighter of all time. Use your imagination. Use that world of thought that you have to bring to the forefront that which you most desire. When you gain control of your attention, when you gain control that you can sit there initially for 30 seconds, then you can be a minute and maybe you expand to five minutes and then you can expand to maybe 10 minutes of concentrating and building and thinking about what you want and how it, it's happening and how it's been done. Remember, it's the wish fulfilled your subconscious and the universe will provide to you the means necessary, the ideas that you do or the person that you need to call. Or just like for finding my transcription of my grades at Dallas Baptist, it came to me and I went, oh, yeah. And I went into that one location and found it. Because you know, you already have the answers. Your subconscious just needs to bring it up to you and let you do that. So, I hope today that I gave you some information that is useful for you. And if you found it useful, I'd appreciate it very much if you would share with your friends and family this location, whether you're on iTunes, Spreaker, YouTube, please follow me and share the link. Subscribe on YouTube, click the bell to be notified when I'm, I'm uploading a new video. Take care. And I will talk to you next time. Thank you for listening today. Please share the link to this show with your friends and family so that they can learn how to be the best that they can be. Visit my website at commandingyourlife.com and follow me on Facebook. Have any suggestions for the show? Just contact me by emailing Beverly at commandingyourlife.com Be sure to join me on the next episode. As you have believed, let it be done to you, and it is so.